Between a man and between shirk and kufr is the prayer. It's as if he was telling us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that this wall, this barrier, this shield between a man and falling into disbelief, between a man and associating partners with Allah is the prayer. So whoever abandons the prayer, it's as though these things are going to envelop him and they're going to come at him and he's not going to be able to defend himself. This is the serious nature. In one narration, who abandons the prayer, he is disbelieved. In another narration, what, what is between a man and shirk and kufr is the salah. So we see the serious nature. Look how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he spoke about those who abandon the prayer and they don't pray. And likewise in the Quran. So these people, Allah describes how they are going to be tormented. And then Allah mentions how they're going to be asked a question. مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ What did you do? that caused you to enter into the fire. What's the reason? Why are you in this fire now? The first reason that the people are going to give as to why they're burning in that fire, they will say, we never used to pray. We were not of those who used to pray. Think about this. It's not about, I'll pray when I get time. I'll pray when I get free from work. I will pray when I can be bothered. He told us, alayhi salam, he said that the first of the actions of the slave, which will be judged by Allah, which Allah will look at on the day of judgment, is the prayer. If the prayer is complete, i.e. he prayed five times a day and he prayed at the correct time, then he has prospered and he has succeeded. And if the prayer is incomplete, i.e. he prayed three times a day, four times a day, twice or not at all, then he has failed and he has lost. This, look at this warning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, he won't look at your hajj, he won't look at your fasting, he won't look at your sadaqah, he won't look at you reading the Quran, he won't read you making dhikr, he won't look at any of this. First and foremost, Allah will look at the prayer. That the prayer, it has been prescribed and it has been enjoined and it has been obligated upon the believers at prescribed times. So it's not about, I'll sleep through Fajr and I won't pray Dhuhr because I'm busy at work and I won't pray Asr and Maghrib because I'm busy at work or I'm driving home from work, whatever it might be. And then when it comes to Salat al Isha, just before I go to sleep, I will pray all of the five daily prayers. This will never ever be accepted from you. And this whole thing of Qada, which the people they think that they can just become lazy and then Allah will accept this from them. Abadan, never ever, this will not be accepted. This whole thing of Qada that you make up the prayer is for accept exceptional circumstances. As we say in English, as it's a, the figure of speech, once in a blue moon i.e. very very rarely there's something which has happened something out of the ordinary and that has caused you to miss the prayer this is there has to be a reason it's not work it's not anything like this and you Allah know? subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions musallin. so woe to those people who pray Allah says woe to the people who pray those who are heedless with regards to their prayer. Those who don't care about what time they pray. pray. They, those who they are lazy when it comes to their prayer. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions how this laziness in the prayer, it is one of the characteristics of the hypocrites. It's one of the characteristics of the hypocrites who pray only so that the rest of the people can see them. Yeah. However, if your job is one of the reasons why you can't pray, you must leave your job. There is no excuse, there is no leeway for a person, even when a person is ill, he has to pray. If you can't pray standing up, you can pray sitting down. If you can't pray sitting down, you can pray lying down. If you can't even do that, then you can pray with your eyes, as the Prophet ﷺ said. Likewise, even when the Muslims are at war and the, the, the army of the enemy is in front of you and the time for prayer comes, you still have to pray. And there is a specific way that this prayer, it is prayed in such uh, circumstances. But the point is, can you miss your prayer because you're at war? No. So even when you're at war, you have to pray. And you don't pray because you have a meeting. You don't pray because uh, you, know, you feel shy to make wudu in the public toilets. This is not an excuse. This is not an excuse and it will not be accepted by Allah. So my dear brother, my dear sister, the prayer, the prayer. Take care of the prayer. Guard your prayer because if you lose your prayer, you will lose your Iman, you will lose your Akhirah. Do not lose your Salah. 
because if you lose your salah you will lose all goodness in this life and in the next life